All right, so let me preface this video by saying the conclusion I reach in this video is not that Fallout 5 is coming at this E3. I also don't rule it out in this video. It still is a plausible scenario, but I just don't want to clickbait or mislead anyone. I think Fallout 5 is coming in about 2020 to 2021, not 2018. So I actually think Fallout 5 may be coming a lot closer than I previously imagined and many of you. So before we delve into this video, let's actually establish a few things. First and foremost, if you don't know who Pete Hines is, he is the VP of PR and Marketing for Bethesda. As the softworks. But as the Softworks is a publisher and behind games like Doom, Prey, Wolfenstein, as well as the Bethesda Game Studios titles, which are currently the Fallout franchise as well as the Elder Scrolls franchise. Todd Howard, on the other hand, is the director of Bethesda Game Studios, again, which is a developer, and they actually create games such as the two franchises I just mentioned. Also, you guys actually voted on this video, so if you subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, you can vote in future polls as to what videos I'm going to make. And just in general, we are fast approaching a quarter million subscribers, so if you want to subscribe, it'd be pretty cool to do so. All right, so to start this one off, or how this story begins, we have to roll the clock back quite far, all the way to Dice Summit in the beginning of 2017, specifically in February of 2017. Todd Howard gave an interview to IGN that kind of spurred a ton of speculation. More or less, he said in that interview that Bethesda was working on seven games currently, as well as there's going to be two new major releases before The Elder Scrolls VI. There'll be a full link to the article down below, but more or less, the explicit things are Bethesda Game Studios, the in-house development studio at Bethesda Softworks, has seven projects going, including a new mobile game. So to break that down a little bit, this is from 2017. We now know more about what those seven projects were, as well as we knew somewhat at the time, but also a few of these were properly revealed at the following E3 in June of 2017. So first and foremost, we have the two VR titles, Fallout 4 VR, which we knew about at the time, and then Skyrim VR, which was announced at E3, and we just got a new announcement that another version of that for PC is coming. Then we have Skyrim for the Nintendo Switch, which we knew about at the time of that interview. We have whatever mobile game was confirmed in this post. He basically said he's working on a mobile game, and that's in the 7, so we know it is a mobile game. We don't know anything about that mobile game, though, even today, although I'll actually get back to that in a second. Then we do have the two major new titles that he talks about in this, and then The Elder Scrolls 6. So now I'm actually making an assumption here. I assume when he says seven new projects going, he actually is also referring to The Elder Scrolls 6. Although I'm not 100% confident in that, maybe what he was referring to is a different mobile game. Maybe there's two mobile games that's a work in progress and he wasn't actually counting The Elder Scrolls 6. Alternatively, maybe he was also referring to another Switch port, something like Fallout 4 on the Nintendo Switch, which kind of got leaked a long time ago, but we haven't heard anything about that since, so maybe this E3 will bring some more news. Or finally, maybe he was actually separating the Skyrim VR that was for PS4 VR versus the Skyrim VR that was the PC version. Maybe he was counting those as two different work in progress games, although I don't actually think that's likely. Or I guess technically it also could be the opposite. Fallout 4 VR right now is only on PC. Maybe he was counting a PS4 VR version that has yet to be announced, but maybe it'll get announced at this E3 or something. So either way, those are the seven titles and that's what we know Bethesda is working on. The two of notable interest there are going to be the mobile game as well as one of those new major projects that is coming along. Over the past few months, there has been a ton of indication that Bethesda Game Studios is going to announce a new AAA game at this coming E3. I've made a ton of standalone videos on this, I'll have them linked at the end of this video, but to summarize more or less, there's been comments made by both Todd Howard and Pete Hines in various interviews and actually on Twitter. One of the most damning pieces is actually Todd Howard made an analogy to wrapping up a game compared to like Moving House or something like that in an interview. Or, or I have to remind myself, it's like you forget. Yeah. You know, if you, if, uh... If you move, you haven't moved in a while. Moving is terrible. Packing and moving or ha having a child, not terrible, but the pressures of it and the, you know, that those are, you, you're, you know, you forget how much, how hard it is uh, to finish a game. And in addition, just the sheer amount of announcements Bethesda has been making leading up to E3. Many of these announcements are things we expected to get announced at E3, so the fact that so many of these are being announced before the conference makes it seem like something big and different is going to be getting announced at the conference. But to reference back to that list, what I think we're actually getting at this coming E3 is a new AAA game, and in addition to that, I think we're going to get another mobile tandem release. So with Fallout 4's announcement, we also got Fallout Shelter, and it was like one of those, all right, you could download Fallout Shelter right now. I personally really like this. I thought it was a really cool way to kind of show off Fallout 4 and build hype for it, but at the same time, give everyone something to do at that moment. 
Fallout Shelter also was wildly successful and it still gets updates and advertisements to this day, so they're probably making at least decent money off of it. It has a freemium model where the game is free to play, but then there's microtransactions and different loot boxes and things like that you can get in the game. Again, definitely seems like Bethesda made money on this, so they're probably going to have another similar thing going on at this E3. So for the longest time, I and I think a lot of other people incorrectly thought that this IGN interview indicated that two new IPs would be coming before The Elder Scrolls VI. So that's to say that we'd get two down. AAA RPGs from Bethesda Game Studios that weren't Fallout or The Elder Scrolls before the release of The Elder Scrolls VI. This created a timeline that made it seem like the next Fallout iteration, if done by Bethesda Game Studios, would be very far away. Todd Howard said in the past that these games take about three to five years to create, so at a bare minimum, the next Fallout, with that hypothesis in mind, would actually be about 10 plus years away. And that was kind of the working theory for a while, that the next Fallout would be very far away, but actually this is largely due to a quote by Todd Howard in this IGN interview. When asked about these two new projects he talked about, he describes it as what I would call kind of different, but still the kind of game people would associate with us. So what a lot of people, myself included, took this to mean is that there would be two new AAA RPGs that are open world, have branching dialogue and quests, a bunch of different options for you to pick from, but also be totally new IPs because they are different. I actually think this is not true. I think one of these is a new IP and one of them is going to be Fallout 5, and I'll kind of justify that a little bit. And a lot of follow-up tweets that are actually very recent, many of these being from only the past few months in 2018, despite the original Todd Howard interview being from 2017 and early in 2017, more or less Pete Hines says that for two years he's actually said that there's two major titles releasing before The Elder Scrolls 6 and that it wasn't in development. And then another tweet from January with someone kind of having the same hypothesis I do, he responds saying that he merely is saying that there's two new projects coming before The Elder Scrolls 6. He doesn't comment on the fact that it's a new IP or not a new IP, just that it's two new major projects. So this is what kind of got me on this original train of thought that actually one of these is going to be a new IP due to that quote by Todd Howard, but I think what that quote actually meant was one of the new projects would be distinctively different while the other one would be something familiar, that being a Fallout game. Again, my real justification for this new IP aspect is that quote by Todd Howard. Now I'm going to show you my justification for the other new game being Fallout 5. So let's talk about Ryan Elozio, and I think I'm pronouncing his name right. If you don't know who Ryan is, well, he's this guy. This doesn't look right. Not right at all. Yeah, so that's a character from Fallout 4. He is the voice of Deacon. So he was going back and forth with someone on Instagram. More or less, he actually says this. Yeah, let's slip by me somehow. The damn sunglasses and dark hair. Zeke, I, I don't know what this all is. Uh, whatever. The important part is this last line. Internally, there is movement gearing up pre-production on Fallout 5. Obviously, I can't get into any details at all right now, but it will be very... Then the image cuts off, but he actually does go on to say... It will be a very interesting journey moving forward. So then later, a few things happen. He actually deletes that tweet and replaces it with a new one, just more or less the same idea, but actually not including the Fallout 4 line. And then even beyond that, he later goes on at this website, Frag Hero, who originally reported on this and actually recants the statement saying he was in character as Deacon. So maybe it's wishful thinking or confirmation bias, but I don't buy it. I think this may have been a legitimate leak for Fallout 5, and although it does kind of support the hypothesis I already have, which is literally the definition of confirmation bias, if you did in fact accidentally leak Fallout 5 on Instagram, what steps would you take? You would probably delete that as fast as possible, make a new statement so hopefully nobody picks up on the fact that you accidentally leaked it, and any news organizations that did in fact cover it, you will go to and say, oh no, that wasn't true, I'm sorry. But Bethesda has misled us in the past regarding the release date of new games. Games. Somebody asking him about the next Bethesda Game Studios game only about five months before its announcement. He responded with saying, you shouldn't expect anything anytime soon. There's been a number of similar instances in the months before this where he just kind of deterred people from this idea. So it's with those two things in mind that I say with a grain of salt that that leak may have actually had some legitimacy behind it. That leak is actually from March of 2016. In that same interview, Todd Howard also mentioned that it typically takes Bethesda Game Studios three to five years to actually fully create one of their games. If you, uh, I think most uh, developers who've worked on games that take whatever, three to five years that our stuff takes. So three to five years from March of 2016 is going to put you in either 2020 or 2021. If we get a new game release at the end of 2018, that would be two to three years following their previous game and probably about a year after the DLC cycle for that game dies down. So with all of that coming together, I think Bethesda Game Studios will release Fallout 5 in either 2020 or 2021. Now, even with everything I've already showed you, there's actually a little bit more to support this. Fallout 4 was Bethesda Game Studios' best-selling game to date. It sold more copies 
copies than Skyrim and really brought Fallout to a much more mainstream audience than it was previously. With this past iteration, the value of the franchise as a whole has gone up considerably and each new iteration will pretty much sell well no matter what. So now I'll put forward two opposing hypotheses and you tell me which one seems more likely with that in mind. Scenario A, Bethesda Game Studios actually isn't really working on Fallout 5 yet. So when we get a new game at this E3 and when it gets released later this year, we get another new game that isn't Fallout 5 and isn't The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, a totally new IP in 2020 let's say. Then in 2022 or 2023 we actually get the next Elder Scrolls release because they again have previously confirmed that two new games or two new major titles will come out before The Elder Scrolls 6. So when we get a new Fallout at 2024, 2025, a full 10 years after the release of Fallout 4. Or conversely, the hypothesis that I'm putting forward where this coming E3, we actually get Starfield or whatever this new IP will be. And then two to three years after that, we actually get the release of Fallout 5. And then another so many years after that, we get the release of The Elder Scrolls 6. If you had a massively successful franchise, literally the last iteration being your best-selling game, would you wait 10 years for the next iteration to come out? I mean, it's definitely possible, but just to put into perspective, this is going to be the 10-year anniversary of Fallout 3. In that time span, Bethesda Game Studios released two new Fallout games. So there of course are certain alternatives here, maybe they'll license it out again like they did with Obsidian. Obsidian seems pretty booked right now, they definitely aren't going to be the ones releasing it, but maybe they reached out to another studio, I mean that's possible, I just don't think that's actually really likely, especially since Bethesda Game Studios has never done that again since Fallout New Vegas. But either way, that's my theory. I think Fallout 5 will actually be coming out in 2020 or 2021. I actually think it's also somewhat likely that it could be this next game. So many things are pointing towards a sci-fi or space game or even Starfield being real, but let's say that's not it. I think it's possible that Fallout 5 could get announced at this E3. After doing all the research for this video, I feel like it's not nearly as unlikely as I previously thought. And well, hopefully you agree with that also. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. It was a fairly long one, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it or found it informative anyway. But of course, before we end things off, we also do have today's psych fun fact of the day. So I don't have an exact source on this, but I learned it in class, so I guess it's probably somewhat true. But more or less, 95% of hacks at major companies actually happen through phishing emails. So the way that goes down is more or less someone's like, hey, I want to hack into, let's say, Apple. What they're going to do is find some of the higher ups or executives at Apple or anyone that would have a login with a pretty good amount of clearance access to a lot of the files and they'll send them a phishing email something like hey uh, you have to reset your password or there was an issue with your account and if you don't fix it by clicking this link your credentials will be revoked and your manager alerted. Things like that will actually create a sense of urgency and you also don't want to get in trouble so it's more likely for people to click on it without putting as much thought into it. So this is actually a pretty big part of what IO psychologists or industrial organizational psychologists do at some of these major companies. They develop specific training so people can recognize when you are sent a phishing email. Typically they have like no HTTPS URL, they don't have a logo of the company on there, maybe grammatical errors, or the website domain or like the email you received it from is .net while the main company has a .com. And you may be thinking, oh whatever, that's not like a real thing, that's not a real issue at companies. Well actually at IBM they did a study where they brought in a psychologist, he made one of these fake emails that had all those individual errors, it had a .net domain, Domain, grammar errors, no logo, things like that. 22% of the employees he sent it to actually clicked on that email, and in theory, he would have got 22% of the employees' logins. So the takeaway being, be careful of what emails you click on, and obviously it's a pretty big problem at major workplaces. As always, again, and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.